here at Archangels of Justice, we have a saying. It's not about being right. It's about getting it right. And getting it right the first time. The reason I'm bringing that up is for several years, Ira and I have been working on cases of police corruption or police incompetence or a combination of both. And sometimes that actually leaks right into the prosecutor's office and to judges. I know a lot of people find that hard to believe. Hi, Salvatore Rastrelli, the Archangel of Justice. Hi, I'm Ira Robbins from the Archangels of Justice. And in this two-part video blog series, Archangels investigators Sal Restrelli and Ira Robbins are going to highlight two cases they worked on that truly capture the problems plaguing law enforcement today and the struggles families go through to get justice. This is Intro to the Archangels Part 1, Angel Siler. But first, make sure you click the subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss any new content from the Archangels of Justice. Click, click, done. Angel Siler died on September 10th, 2011, in Susanville, California. Angel Siler wound up with three men in a shack in Susanville, in downtown, just a couple blocks from the police station, and wound up in such a catatonic state from the drugs that finally, after 18 hours, one of these individuals called her mother and said that he couldn't get Angel to wake up. And then called 911. William Romero was in contact with Angel's mother, Michelle, and advised her that they were having trouble waking up Angel, that he, she had been in the shower for an extended period of time and that was unconscious. And Michelle said to Romero, contact paramedics immediately. So the um, paramedics show up. There's two other people there with Romero. And Angel Seiler is laying on a bed. She's got bruises all over her body, her wrists, her arms, between her legs. And she's unconscious. Angel had been in that state for many, many hours. There was no reason for this person to wait 18 hours to call 911. A detective named Michael Melito is assigned to come over there, respond to the house, and he did, and did no investigation whatsoever with all three of these guys standing there. But when the police responded to this shack, and find this very attractive young girl, naked, knowingly that there were three men involved, did absolutely nothing but put her on an ambulance, virtually comatose, and sent her away. Eventually, she was flown to Reno, Nevada, because Susanville, uh, California, is where she was in the reg regional uh, medical center is Reno. They flew her there, and on the uh, 10th of uh, September, she passes away. William Romero came to the scene. Um, at one point, he knocked out her breathing tube, drove all the way from Susanville to Reno, Nevada, went in the hospital, knocked out her breathing tube, wrote all over her body with a pen, and uh, well, demanded drugs for himself, and from there he uh, was thrown out because he was in possession of a knife also. Angel was full of bruises around her throat, her arms, and her thighs. Nothing was done nor documented by law enforcement. Her mother took pictures at the hospital. Her mother sent those pictures to us, Ira and I, which we reviewed, and these pictures obviously depict probably a sexual assault, and that she was being forcibly held down to be bruised in that fashion in those locations. 
She languished in the hospital for days, never ever regaining consciousness, and died. The police in that case told her mother, Michelle, this was nothing more than a medical emergency. That was why they didn't investigate anything. And Michelle Seiler is concerned that her daughter was murdered. I mean, it's quite sure it might not be first degree intentional murder, but it was somebody that gave her drugs or was involved and, and they may have sexually assaulted her also. They did nothing. They did no investigation, nothing whatsoever. They didn't ask the hospital for any kind of uh, uh, testing to be done, sexual assault testing or anything like that. And uh, then the, when Michelle Seiler tries to, you know, get some answers, they treat her like she's a bad person. They won't give her any information, and uh, they tell her it's a pending investigation, but they did nothing. So this languished for a couple of years. We got involved in it. We investigated it, re-reviewed all the documentation, and found medical notes where a doctor wrote that the amount of drugs in her system were not self-administered because of the lifespan going through the body, the met metabolic rate indicated that while she was under the influence of other drugs, someone continually fed her drugs through injection sites or otherwise. Salvatore and I went to Susanville, California. The Police department refused to meet with us. The state's attorney refused to meet with us. The detective involved in the scene refused to meet with us. Although we did see him in a restaurant, he refused to talk to us. The state's attorney husband, the state's attorney's husband, had a radio show for the area. Uh, he was the DJ or whatever, the MC, and he made a substantial amount of statements about Sal and me, about our work, etc., and said we didn't have the courage to come on his radio show. We immediately called and tried to get on, but he refused to let us. We tried desperately to interview with the police and the prosecutor. Ultimately, they realized the pressure from us was too great, and they eventually arrested one, just one of the three. But they had done such a lousy investigation and had treated Michelle Seiler so badly that, um, and make, made all kinds of statements that uh, she was wrong and didn't know what she was talking about, and derogatory remarks about the deceased Angel Seiler, that they turned around and once they charged him with murder, eventually had to reduce it. So uh, he took a plea and uh, did some time, but not what it really deserved. But the entire actions of the police department and of the state's attorney and of the people in the city were to avoid prosecuting anybody or even claiming it was a murder because to them they claimed it was a medical emergency and as usual when somebody complains about wrongdoing by the police and uh, that there's a cover-up they do everything they can to make derogatory statements about anybody complaining in the meantime, Sale and I were correct. There was a murder there. One of the other individuals involved in that case was arrested about a year and a half ago in an entirely different case. Guess what he had done? He had drugged another girl and sexually assaulted her, and he is in jail now. But when we went after them, they heckled us. They believed we were crazy, but we wouldn't back off. Do you have any thoughts on the subject? Let us know in the comments below or reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook. If you want more content, you can check out our website, archangelsofjustice.com, which is updated weekly. You can also sign up for our monthly newsletter. Thank you for watching this latest entry from Archangels of Justice, and we hope to see you back here soon.